You know, I often get comments about how I'm lying when I talk about the environmental benefits of EVs. Just a couple of days ago, someone, uh, let's call him Mr. P, accused me of dishonesty and then rattled off something in the comments about lithium mining in Chile. He was outraged. I mean, how dare we mine for lithium? After all, Mr. P, your cell phone will run on goodwill and pixie dust, right? Well, we'll get back to Mr. P in a minute. But first, let's talk about what it really takes to power the modern world, whether it's electrons or explosions. Because when it comes to mining lithium, cobalt, and nickel for EVs, the critics, like Mr. P, become outraged and scream, environmental disaster, and you're using more energy to build your EV than any internal combustion engine car, and yada, 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 they go on for hours. But those same voices go suspiciously silent when we look at the oil extraction and what it has done to our planet. Buckle up, because we're going to, pardon the pun, drill deep. Here we go. Lithium extraction primarily happens via brine evaporation, like in the Atacama Desert in Chile, or as hard rock mining as it does in Australia. Chile's desert contributes nearly 25% of global lithium and consumes 65% of the region's water resources. We'll address the water issue in a minute, but here are the stats. Extracting one metric ton of lithium uses between 106 and 220,000 gallons of water. That's between 400,000 and a million liters. Mining leads to groundwater depletion, ecosystem disruption, and soil salinization. But the soil in the Atacama Desert is already pretty salty. It also emits about 15 tons of CO2 per ton of lithium extracted. But now for the bright spot. Researchers at Stanford have developed a seawater lithium extraction method using redox electrodialysis. This will drastically reduce the environmental impact of lithium mining. But I have a question. If we have built 1.4 million miles, that's 2.28 million kilometers, of oil pipelines around the world, why is it suddenly not possible to move a little bit of seawater inland across a desert into the Atacama Desert to make it a little more sustainable? I'm more than sure that Mr. P would become outraged that we built a pipeline carrying harmless water, but I'll bet he still has no problem with the millions of miles of oil and gas pipelines that we have literally used to destroy pristine wilderness all over the world. And, hey, they leak like a sieve. Are we starting to see a little bit of the duplicitous nature of the anti-EV crowd? So let's move over to cobalt mining. Over 70% of the world's cobalt comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo, often with serious ethical and environmental questions, especially when you see kids digging cobalt out of a mine. But the environmental costs are also important. Toxic tailings and acid mine drainage poison local water supplies. Nearby communities report birth defects and respiratory illnesses. Sulfuric acid used to process seeps into rivers, and it devastates the ecosystem. But here's the shift. Cobalt is fading away from the EV picture, thanks to the rise of lithium iron phosphate batteries, the LFP battery. LFPs are also cheaper, safer, and 100% cobalt free. But let's not ignore this. Refining gasoline takes cobalt, roughly 4.6 thousand metric tons per year. Yet, when EVs fully shift away from cobalt batteries to the LFP, the only use that will remain will be for gasoline. What then? Will the outrage magically disappear? Let's also take a quick look at nickel mining. Nickel mining spans Indonesia, Russia, and the Philippines. In Indonesia's Halmahera Island, concessions cover over 40% of the indigenous Hungana Manyawa lands. Nickel production brings deforestation. 
water contamination and soil erosion. Rivers become lifeless, biodiversity collapses, and local farming dies. But again, when EVs shift to the LFP batteries, there's no nickel used. So when that happens, where will the outrage land next? Now let's talk about some other types of mining, specifically platinum mining. Platinum is essential for catalytic converters in the internal combustion engine car, and its footprint is huge. There are 580,000 tons of waste rock per one ton of platinum extracted. It requires 400 cubic meters of water per kilogram. Energy consumption is between 168 and 256 gigajoules per kilogram, with 40 to 50 tons of CO2 emitted. Smelting platinum releases sulfur dioxide and small particulate matter. Hello, respiratory disease. Mining also leads to deforestation, soil erosion, and toxic runoff. And once again, crickets from the critics. Zero outrage. Now let's jump right in with both feet. Let's talk about oil extraction. Canada's oil sands alone span 142,200 square kilometers. Tailing ponds are so large they're clearly visible from space. No outrage for this? How about the oil rigs? Thousands of rigs dot our oceans. Remember the Deepwater Horizon spill? 11 people were killed and 134 million gallons of oil were dumped into the Gulf. Surely you can find some outrage for this one, right? Let's talk about tankers and oil spills. There were 10,000 plus oil spills in U.S. waters between 1985 and 2020. The Exxon Valdez, remember that, dumped 11 million gallons off of Alaska. There was about five minutes of outrage for that one. But when the images disappeared from the nightly news, the outrage subsided quickly back into quiet apathy. Let's also talk about air pollution and the death toll caused by that air pollution. Burning gas and diesel releases PM2.5, that is particulate matter that is 2.5 microns and smaller, and also ozone. Both of these things are linked to heart and lung disease. They're so small, these PM2.5 particulate matter particles, that they can travel deeply into the respiratory tract, reaching the lungs, causing short-term health effects such as eye, nose, throat, and lung irritation, coughing, sneezing, runny nose, and shortness of breath. A 2021 Harvard-led study found that 8.7 million annual deaths around the world are caused from long-term exposure to the PM2.5 pollutants from the burning of gasoline and diesel. People are dying, and there is zero outrage from the pro-petroleum crowd. Zero. None. Zilch. Now let's talk about the unseen ecological scar. Global oil and gas pipelines cover 2.28 million kilometers. That's 57 Earth-circling loops. The U.S. alone has 85,000 kilometers, many of these aging and leak prone. There is constant land clearing, disrupted ecosystems, and soil and water contamination. Again, outrage anyone? So what's worse? Critics point to dirty EV battery mining, but the fossil fuel industry has been blowing up ecosystems, choking our skies, and poisoning our oceans for well over a century. Battery materials can be mined once, recycled, and improved. Oil? Well, it's burned, and we must keep extracting it forever to power the explosions that go on under your hood. The only progress we've seen in the internal combustion engine car over the last century is a little bit better gas mileage, the removal of lead, and reduced sulfur content. That's it. That's the only improvements that we've seen. Let's face it, doing the same thing at a slower pace and expecting a different outcome is not progress. It is the pure definition of insanity, and the result is always the same. Destroyed landscapes, oil-soaked oceans, polluted air, and a 
planet gasping for breath. An EV can be built using renewables, powered cleanly, recycled efficiently, and eventually emit zero new pollution. Oil will never be able to make that claim. With the EV, we will get there. Slowly, yes, but with oil, we can never get there. Remember that. We can never get there with oil. Period. End of sentence. Case completely closed. So yes, mining lithium, cobalt, and nickel has impacts. But they're finite. They're fixable. And most importantly, all of those components are recyclable. Fossil fuels, constantly extracted, constantly burned, and always polluting. And they can never be recycled. As we transition to cleaner tech, let's ask smarter questions, demand better practices, and not fall for the oil industry's misinformation campaign, like Mr. P has. And as for Mr. P, he made a claim he could not back up. He called me a liar. But anyone who knows me, yes, even the folks who don't like me, will tell you that my integrity does not bend, especially not to anonymous trolls. So here's the deal. Back your words with facts or stay seated and silent. Those are your only two choices when you come to Jim's EV Adventures to refute my claims or impugn my integrity. I am always open to discussion. Good, honest, open debate about anything is good. But I am not open to abusive criticism that questions my sincerity or my integrity. And I hope you know that. Until next time, I'll see you out there or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. Take it easy, everybody, and drive electric.